Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I think I have muted you or you have muted yourselves. <laughs> uh, but um, I think we could start this session. Hello, I'm Toms. I hope that uh, you guys can see me. I will un unmute also our, uh, our second host just in a moment. Hello. Oh, hi, Paulus. Hello. So now I'm now I know that the, uh, that the others can hear me as well. Right. Paulus. Okay, maybe he's not there. So, uh, so I'm Tom's. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you, Paulus. I'm Tom's. I'm the uh, co-founder of Setapad, and uh, I'm the CEO. And I'm more on the sales side and on the marketing side. And that's also why I'm very excited about uh, our new uh, client UI interface. Uh, I'm going to be taking uh, some parts of the of the client UI, and some other parts will be taken by my uh, colleague uh, Paulus. So, uh, Paulus, you can please go ahead and introduce yourself. All right. Can you maybe uh, allow my video now? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I did not know that it's up to me. Yes. But okay. Yeah. You are the god here. <laughs> yes. Uh, yep. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hello from San Francisco, I suppose. <laughs> okay, just kidding. So uh, a short introduction from my side uh, regarding the new client UI, which UI I suppose already everybody saw you, all of you. Um, I would like to give you more background information on how and why we did it. Obviously, of course, we wanted to, to improve our tool and improve its capabilities, but uh, we had more reasons behind it. We didn't not we did not just want to show you guys how much we generate, of, of how much of revenue we generate for you, how many impressions we register, what's the fill rate, what's the CPM, and all those, uh, let's say, simple metrics. But we also wanted to reveal you more, to show you how exactly we generated that revenue, where it's coming from, why is it this or that, why is it co going up or going down? And uh, based on our experience and also based on feedback from our customers, from some of you as well, uh, we realized the best, so to say, I don't know, okay, maybe it's not the best at the moment, but at least the best what we could possibly bring uh, on the table right now for you. Um, and which metrics to present, how to put them together and how to make them work together in order for you to better understand how we generate that revenue for you and what could be done next to further increase the yield. So that the revenue was growing more and more. Maybe you can even find some nice and interesting new solutions, how to drive more valuable traffic for yourselves. This is our aim. So when looking from a perspective, uh, from, from let's say the idea of how the value is generated through online ads. We probably all agree that uh, ads should bring results to advertisers as well, because why else we should pay for them, right? Some value and some, some business results for the, first of all, for advertisers that run their ads through our platforms and, and systems. And this is very much connected to how many pages you generate on your website, right? So if a page, if a website is bigger, if you have more pages to monetize, to run ads on, it probably uh, suggests that revenue could be higher, right? But if you look from even deeper perspective, the users generate those pages. They come to your website, we, we visit it, we engage with your content, we scroll down, swipe left or right, and etc. So this is basically a behavior of your of, of your users. So what we wanted to do next 
to be, go even further and show you that actually we are not monetizing just the impressions and the, the pages, basically. We are also monetizing users' behavior. So it's very much important to see that users stay on your site. And if they stay longer, how much you can monetize out of that. For example, if we, Tom's will, and I, of course, will tell you more about this part. But if you, for example, have a person who is visiting a website and staying a lot and reading some article for a long time, you probably might think that, okay, we showed him one banner once. Maybe he, we can change that banner and show another one and have two impressions instead of just one, even though that user didn't do any uh, particular action related to click, swipe, or something like that. So our uh, initial and um, long-term idea for this project is to basically build you guys a platform where you can understand better how this revenue is generated, from which sources it's coming from, uh, how to improve the yield further, and uh, basically to be able for you to use it as a daily day-to-day -day platform to analyze uh, your business, let's say online business results. And um, basically to build it, to be it like an analytics platform where you can play around and do some stuff, uh, et cetera. So that's a short introduction from my side. I hope Tom's will uh, elaborate more on some parts of it and we will change uh, later, I will talk more to you about the performance indicators I tried to emphasize about. So thank you very much for this Okay, part. okay. Thank you, Paulus. So uh, I think I can disable your video now. I might, I'll do, do myself, it. no worries. Yeah, oh, great. So let's go into uh, the client UI. Uh, you can also see Paulus here uh, on the left bottom. So <laughs> he's always watching over. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, as you may know, this is our uh, new client UI, and I'll just quickly go through the sections here on the left side, uh, what they are, what they're meant for, and then we're going to go into uh, all the details that follow us. Yeah. A short moment. I think, I'm not sure if we are seeing the screen. Oh. Can you please check it if you're sharing? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry. This is the slide that you're showing. Ah, okay. Okay. Now you should see it. Yes, all good. Great. So I will go on the on the first on the sections on the left side. There are several several of them. Let's start from the from the bottom. Uh, this is not the main point that we will discuss, but you should know. So uh, on ad reports, um, you know there are occasions when we want to block some ad when we spotted some unwanted ad, either competitors of yours or some uh, content that is not entirely with your policies. So uh, you can report this ad and then it will pop up here. And first it will show uh, the status that is uh, not uh, blocked yet, that it's, uh, uh, we are working on it. And then once it's done, you will see this green checkbox. So on this account, there have been just uh, three such of uh, notifications. You maybe uh, could have more if you're working with set up ads, uh, let's say over a year or so. Uh, these reports that are here are coming from our plugin. Uh, I hope uh, that you are guys aware of it, that you can install a plugin on your browser. Uh, it's sorry, an extension uh, to your browser and which shows you an overlay just like it, uh, it does now. Uh, uh, we're looking at the same publisher, needpix.com, and there is an overlay uh, with some ad. In case uh, you don't like it uh, or you want it for some reason to be blocked, uh, you should report this ad uh, and follow the instructions there. It's very simple. Just click on the ad and, and send us <clears throat> a message. Why would you like it to be blocked or don't send anything? And then it will pop up here on client UI and will be blocked. So that's uh, that's uh, how to get it here. And then uh, it's set up a job to uh, make it uh, disappear. And not only from particular SSP, in that case, uh, but from all of the uh, SSPs. Uh, next section is tools right above the ad reports. That's where you can get this uh, extension. Uh, as I said, it's an extension to your Chrome browser. You install it and then whenever, well, you have to log in as well with your uh, credentials, same as for client UI. And then just on your own website, you will see such uh, overlays wherever set up ad has served the banner. So now we have covered ad reports. 
tools. And uh, let's go to the ads DXT. This is something uh, new uh, and should be very helpful for you regarding updating of the ads DXT and checking that everything is in place. So uh, what this does is that you can, if, if you want, you can always press this refresh button and it will tell you, it will scan through your ads DXT section and will tell you if you're missing some IDs. If it says green, it means it's all fine. Uh, but in this particular case, on mediacatalogas.lt, there are 13 lines missing. You can click on that and get exactly which lines are missing. So uh, you have a, a possibility to simply copy the missing lines and paste it in your ads txt section. Uh, I'm sure you know what is ads txt section, yes, just that it could be uh, a lot of lines and you don't really know which ones are set up at, which one is yours or someone else's, and you can just copy paste those missing ones. Uh, as well as you can download all of the ads txt and then uh, repaste that uh, on your website, whichever way you find easiest. I think that showing the missing lines is really helpful because you just add the missing ones. Also, uh, you should pay attention that once in a while we are adding some uh, some demand channel, uh, updating some uh, of our IDs, and it could be one or two maybe per month that we are changing. And uh, that is not uh, something you do only once a year, I would say. I would encourage you to, to check it uh, uh, monthly basis because uh, missing of the ads txt means of course that we're missing out on some demand that could be buying your uh, advertising in place. So uh, that's a that's a helpful uh, new tool, uh, always to be up, up to date. Uh, then one above is billing. Uh, billing, as you may know, is where you enter all of your payment details. But what is there now is that you also can view uh, the invoices and you can also uh, see an overview for all the previous months and you can see whether the invoice was paid uh, or where you can expect the payment to be uh, to be done uh, that's uh, that's something new that we didn't have uh, before so uh, not really uh, the focus of all of this uh, all of this meeting uh, this seems to be quite uh, straightforward what it is uh, but uh, I just wanted to go quickly through of all of these uh, sections. And now I will give it back to Paulus so he can continue his talk about uh, the metrics and uh, how, we, uh, how we have designed them to, be, to give you some good understanding of why certain things are connected with each other. With each other. So uh, back to you, Paulus. Okay, thank you, Thomas. All right, so maybe I can start sharing my screen now. Um, you, Tom's, have to turn off your own, I think. Okay. Um, I hope you guys can see now my screen. Uh, say no if you don't, otherwise I'm continuing. So it's first all good. of all, it's all good. All right. So uh, what I would like to start with is. Uh, the structure itself, how we organized items together to make it easier. Of course, uh, you probably understand that we, we really analyzed uh, the behavior. We, we collected lots of feedback and uh, etc. so that we could decide for the best possible uh, way how we organize so much data in one place. Uh, if you think of it uh, as a, uh, let's say, user who is so to say a dummy a bit, or let's say have very basic knowledge, of course it's, in, it's not so easy to understand right away what we are looking at, but we really wanted to show exactly the main, the most important keywords, like for example, revenue, it's the first item that we showed in here. Um, and uh, so that it's easier by default to see the main metrics as you got used already in our previous reporting interface. And by the way, speaking about previous reporting interface, I hope you don't mind that we actually switched it a bit by force when we start, when we renewed this uh, new, uh, when we started running this new client UI. It's just because we realized that it's really good. We had very good feedback from the customers who were testing it. And that we thought that, okay, you guys, 
for sure will have everything here and even more. So we kind of forced to start using the new one. So I hope you don't mind. I know that some of you uh, uh, could not uh, deliver certain things with a new one, but we fixed those. And uh, I think uh, everybody is uh, happy and okay to have that. Okay, get back to this structure. So here it's quite self-explanatory, I think. Uh, data picker, you can choose a custom period and you can choose uh, some predefined timeframes or you can select a custom one. It's like in every major or advanced platform. And what we did here is we actually split the main metrics into three groups. By default, it's just two groups, but you, here you can see also audience. I will tell you more about this one a bit later. So the monetization part is turned on by default. And here you can see that you can actually click those buttons and switch from performance to monetization back forth, or you can even click some metrics that are clickable and they will be displayed on the graph. But as you see, by default, you see the most important metrics that you got used to. You saw them and you had them in the previous interface. So it's revenue requests, impressions, and I'm not going to talk more about those because it's quite clear. I would like to tell you more about the performance metrics. Those performance, performance metrics, uh, we believe, are very important. And they show the real value that Setupad brings. We start with the refresh revenue. And the refresh revenue is something what we call a smart refresh. It's uh, our own solution. And I would like to say to you that we were among the first companies to actually start running such kind of smart refresh. It's basically, like I told you before, an ad change when a user is active, when we have a good bit from the auction, and uh, when a certain amount of time passed while user is still being active and the ad placement is visible. So the smart refresh revenue is very important. It's 100% additional revenue that we generate for you. If we get to have those impressions, those requests that we, you give us uh, to process and it's incremental revenue that it's part of this total revenue. But as you can see, we split here this refresh revenue and you can uh, probably easily realize that almost one third of the total revenue is generating, generated by basically monetizing, um, as I tried to tell you before, user behavior, not just pages, not just impressions, but the fact that user was staying on the page, he was active, we had a good bit from the auction, and that's why we allowed this uh, auction demand partner to win this impression. Smart refresh rate means how many impressions, how many times we had, uh, we were running it, uh, it's uh, more or less half of the impressions. Actually, we are planning to introduce a bit more detailed statistics in our reporting interface uh, near future. It's going to be additional metrics that we will show you, and especially related to smart refresh. So you will be able to even have smart refresh average viewability, which is not yet available. So you will immediately see that smart refreshed impressions actually have a lot higher viewability, also the CTR. Here we show average CTR per, per whole uh, account, per whole uh, selected uh, dimension in here. And we also have our CPM metric. Our CPM metric is uh, uh, CPM, which is calculated from ad requests, not the impressions that we sold, but from ad requests. Our CPM helps you to better understand what's the real revenue that we generated from initial requests that we had in total. It's very confusing sometimes when different platforms are being compared, the CPM is taken into consideration, but not the requests that each and every platform had a chance to monetize. So with our CPM, you can immediately compare the results if you would be running some A-B tests with, uh, let's say, our competitors. So you should probably, um, our account managers for sure would tell you if you would include them in this test, that the CPM is not the right metric to use when comparing different platforms, the RCPM is supposed to be used because it takes into consideration the total inventory, not just the inventory that we managed to monetize or somebody else managed to monetize. And then we go to the CTR, uh, which uh, becomes visible if you deselect uh, bigger percentage metrics. So you can follow also the trend and the results of your real performance of your ads, how many clicks you basically have on average. 
we take we, we, we took those metrics from ad exchange google ad exchange so uh that uh, it has usually majority of the traffic bought so it was basically a kind of we agreed that and we decided that it reflects the value of the inventory most precisely and the availability metric is also taken from google ad exchange moving forward i would like to show you and in this particular account we got google analytics connected why uh, because google analytics if connected to the domain the right way and the right uh, uh, property can show you how much value your users actually generate so we made additional metrics here which are user rpm srpm which is session and page rpm rpm is basically a cpm just that uh, we named it a bit differently to, re to reflect a kind of different metric in a way uh, rpm is revenue per mile it's like cpm cost per mile okay cpm is a metric that we already did uh use in most cases therefore we did not change it but it's basically a synonym to uh, cpm but this one is calculated by dividing thousands of users i mean each thousand of users is like um like a kind of cpm uh, a unit and uh, we got uh, when we divide this uh, by revenue we get a user rpm so basically you can follow now the trend how much each day, uh, each uh, of your thousands of users, like a package of thousand users generate. So basically you can see some uh, ups and downs and then you can think why it's, why was it going up and down? Then you can try to see some correlations with your viewability. Maybe it's actually reflecting <clears throat> uh, or related to the viewability. Let me try to turn on some, okay, gap. Yeah. Uh, in this particular account or uh, for the whole domain, maybe it's not the best way to see the correlations, but in some cases, when you select a particular ad unit, you can follow the trend for the viewability and how much uh, it could, uh, let's say how uh, different RPMs could be uh, generated. I would like to stress one thing. We currently do not have a possibility to precisely show you the metrics per particular ad units unless we run through um, the whole inventory. It's because Google Analytics is like totals. So we have the most precise metrics per domain level. Therefore, we show it per domain level. If you choose, let's say, Medic. Oh, sorry. Got disconnected from the account for some reason. Just a moment, getting back to it. So Media Catalogus here. It has a way lower URPM. Uh, it's because the traffic is different. And uh, basically the best way to view it is by just selecting the domain and then you can have all those metrics. Google Analytics can be connected easily through here, through the settings of Google Analytics dedicated uh, in this particular section of the reporting. And uh, my main thing, what I wanted to show you is that you can quickly uh, check the URPMs, check their trends. And here you can better understand that users generate revenue, their ses sessions also have certain value and pages also, let's say, participate in revenue generation in a certain way. And um, if you, for example, understand that, okay, you are paying in this case on average, something like seven euros per thousand of users, you can probably think of traffic acquisition strategies. If you have some possibilities to generate traffic cheaper than you would get for this price, for example, maybe Facebook, maybe some Facebook groups, maybe some uh, special um, re relationship with another publisher who charges you less than what you would get, you can easily basically think of establishing your media plan to grow your online business just by knowing how much revenue your users bring to you on average. And of course you might ask, okay, so we probably need a split by channels, how each and every different channel, uh, how much additional value they generated from their traffic. So this is a thing that we actually are planning to build. Uh, it's not yet available in current interface, but we understand there is a big need for that. And uh, just, 
keep working with us. It's, it's planned for the next updates. Okay, so uh, I'm giving back uh, a microphone and virtual microphone to Tom's to continue with the other parts of the interface. Thank you very much. Yep, Tom's. I'm stopping yes. here. Yes, I'm here. Okay, I stopped. I am here. I'm trying to. Yeah, I cut the session uh, probably. <laughs> yeah, could be. So I hope you can guys see my screen. Uh, right, Paulus? Yes, yes yeah. it is visible. Good, good. So a um, few things. Um, please uh, write us. <clears throat> uh, you can write a comment. Uh, I mean, uh, you can write it in chat if you have any questions about uh, some particular metric or, or, uh, uh, or uh, anything else. And uh, we'll try to answer that if that will be possible. Uh, regarding the particular metric that Povalas described, there is a small uh, the tooltip uh, there on the right side of each metric, and it uh, well these are basic metrics, and so the explanation is it's it's simple. But there are also there are also some links to our blog articles that have uh, more uh, a, a wider description with some ex some uh, examples and how it it is actually relating to something or in particular case about smart refreshes, how our viewable bid optimization works because it's an optimization mechanism and uh, refresh is just something that happens in the result, yes? Uh, and why this way and not, not other way? Uh, because you will see that actually these things uh, are quite different between domains, between placements. Uh, so first thing, make sure you understand uh, how they're, let's say, getting calculated before you link them with other metrics. And, uh, uh, and each particular account can have a different, uh, different way. I mean, it will have different results. Uh, so there is no just like a, a simple recipe or a simple connections. Um, uh, you really have to dig into them. So I encourage you to, uh, of course, as Paul has showed, uh, see the audience uh, because that's available on uh, on on uh, on a domain level and the best uh, because you cannot also calculate count users together but once it comes about these performance statistics uh, then really encourage you to go one after another one the particular placement and then you will see uh, different uh, placement results uh, some of that uh, I mean some placement could be stopped some placement could be started and that could be a, even uh, the most basic explanation of, of why something dropped or increased, yes. Um, just remember that placements are now here at the bottom. You can easily search them if you want. You can type them in, either the size or the name. Let's say you remember it was a top placement. So you say, say for example, need to stop placement and I see what's there, yes. Uh, and uh, I immediately see that the smart refresh is working as crazy and that basically almost half of the money I'm getting from this particular uh, way of optimization, which is very, very substantial. So uh, I'm about to, to tell you about the other graphs. That was just my comment on the top. And so the other graphs are about basic distribution of your revenues. Uh, and we are talking about uh, simple metrics as we all know it, price as ECPM, impressions, as something that we already monetized, not requests in this case, and the revenue, which is simply the price uh, multiplied by impressions uh, and is a result of the revenue. Uh, but there are several ways how to look at them. Uh, and uh, uh, these graphs uh, show you the, the basic understanding of why this particular result is, is this, and maybe uh, could give you uh, uh, some ideas for some, uh, some other pricing strategies uh, uh, that, that you may take. So uh, the first one is revenue distribution per deciles. So decile, and again, there's a tooltip uh, and there's an article actually about it long time ago. Deciles is simply 10 intervals. Uh, and in this way, you see 10 intervals according to the price, yeah? These intervals are not in the same length. For example, first one is from zero to 11, second one is 11 to 13, yeah? While the sum of the last ones is, for example, from two euros to 61 euro. They are very much different. 
but in each of these details, uh, there is uh, approximately, uh, well, I'll go even try to calculate, and it always fails on the last one, try to allocate approximately a similar amount of impressions, yes? So these are your details, and then you can see which part of these 10 pieces of your inventory, which are grouped according to their price, generates you the highest uh, revenues, yeah? And of course, you can see that the, the larger ones are, are the main object where the most of the money is coming from, yeah? Uh, and you can understand how much you will, let's say, optimize if you just, for example, increase floor price from zero to 13 euros, you won't increase much of the revenues. You will just cut some part of the revenues. Uh, you might as well do it, uh, but uh, you it also still you would feel in some like uh, five or ten percent. For example, okay, here is actually two. Uh, sorry, here is two percent. Here is two percent. You can see the percentages there written uh, on that uh, box, which which tells you yes. And then once you go here, basically once you move uh, forward. Uh, to average ECPM uh, and above it, uh, you will see that that's where the most of the money is actually generated, yes. And that shows you simply that Setapad sells from zero euros to 61 euros uh, in this particular uh, placement uh, and that the prices differ very much, uh, but the main magic is happening here at the, the higher price in, uh, interval and uh, uh, of course these values will be very much different for each account but this kind of uh, elephant nose you will see uh, almost uh, almost all the time unless you are somehow influencing uh, the inventory that you're giving to set a pad and it can also be visible here if let's say high prices are cut out or the low prices are cut out that should be also visible so this uh, splits for 10 details according to the price, yeah? And it gives you the revenue. Uh, it doesn't tell you about the total, yeah? And let's say uh, the next question would be, uh, as I start to say, okay, so I could count these smalls together and how much would that be together and how much are my top three details worth? So that's basically something you can do on the next graph on the cum cumulative distribution because cumulative means that it's, adding together yes so it's a one line uh, and uh, it adds together everything below this uh, line or below this ecpm and everything above it so as you can see this bar can be scrolled and uh, the, by default it's standing where the average ecpm is uh, it can be increased to the maximum it can be decreased to the minimum uh, and uh, this tells you let's say if we take the average yeah it stands here so the left side is from one euro cent to three euros how much of the revenue i make from this part and you can see i make uh, 79 percent almost 80 percent yeah and uh but i also spend 98 percent of all my impressions you can see that there's just a little amount of those impressions left for the whole second part yeah and you can see the second part by only two impressions from your uh whole inventory generated 20 percent of the revenues yeah so that's uh that's very much describing the uh the the power of the of those high prices and how actually they defined the the future success and that looking at just the average ecpm doesn't uh, always give you, sometimes it doesn't give anything at all because there is uh, there are very few bids on such exact average price. And that this price uh, is, is uh, changing with every impression. But once you group, you can try to see, uh, even if you have some minimum price strategy, for example, not from one cent, but from three cents, yes, you can already assume and you can see how much impressions would that mean uh, and uh, and here as well, of course, if you see that that uh, doesn't receive high uh, ECPMs, you should uh, be asking questions and investigating. Of course, the result is um, again the actual price. For example, average of three euros, you won't see in mo most of the accounts because that's a very 
uh, specific case according to the audience, a very valuable audience, and and a lot of time spent on such, such things. Uh, it can be as well as 30 euro cents, yes. Uh, uh, but the graph will almost uh, always uh, show you that with something like 20%, uh, you are making, uh, well, in this case, it doesn't show that, but with 20% of impressions, you're making 80% of the money. And from 80% of impressions, you just make the 20% of the money. Let's try to uh, click uh, to some other other placement. Uh, that may also uh, show us a different graph. And remember, the, the data that is here, including the graphs below, takes into account the time period you selected. Basically, this whole view is based on the time period that you selected, yes? If you check last seven days or last 30 days, it can change also in, on, on this graph, yeah? So here, this placement, for example, has 1.51 uh, ECPM, which is approximately in the, almost in the middle, yeah? And you see 30% of impressions bring 76% of revenue as well, 24% of revenues it's up 70% of impressions. And this small empty bar uh, just means that there was uh, a floor price or a passback or something like that to make it super precise. So it illustrates you that, uh, that uh, firstly, the price is uh, different for every impression and how much in those intervals they actually make money and then uh, uh, accumulating to the certain selected point that you want, you can see. Uh, and I think, uh, well, revenues you cannot much influence, but you can decide about the impressions and how you allocate them. Uh, and if you have some alternatives, uh, self promo campaigns, some others, uh, you should also be aware, for example, if you decide to sell this inventory for some, some direct advertisers, then it could, uh, 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 it doesn't mean that by selling, for example, for 150, would result you in uh, in actual, uh, I mean, with 100% that you will earn extra because it could be that this particular advertiser was previously paying you, I don't know, 10 euros, and uh, and now it made a deal for you with, with for for uh, for two euros, and you think it's good, yes, but actually there are advertisers paying uh, paying much more. So uh, what I'm suggesting is always at least sell it for double the average ECPM, yeah, because then uh, you are safe that you are uh, not actually uh, losing, yeah, uh, by selling it for what you think is a good price, but that's just one good price in in average, uh, in this sense. Uh, so uh, that's the two graphs about the revenue distribution. Uh, I really encourage you to. Just go and, and click through different placements because it really have would have different results. Same as the, the graph uh, above, and same also the graph um, below. And let me to make it maybe a bit more data on the whole domain level. Uh, uh, let let's give it a moment, and I'll show you the last table about the distribution uh, over different SSPs. Uh, you may know this is essentially uh, the, the, the fundamental thing that Setapad does. Yes, we talk and we do a lot with optimization, but at the very uh, basics of it, we have connections with our demand partners. Call them supply side platforms, SSPs, DSPs, doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, it matters, but uh, we can uh, we can connect uh, all of them, uh, uh, and uh, and not if that's uh, not necessary. For example, if something is not somebody is not bidding at all, not buying anything. So here, here are all the supply side platforms um, that we have connected. As you can see, uh, uh, there's also Setapad here uh, as one of uh, one of the buyers. These are our direct uh, connections and the relationships. Uh, and we connect them all into one auction, and this is all the, the, the main purpose of the header bidding, uh, that we connect them all, including Google, and then we pick the, the, the one who is bidding the most. Uh, I'm sure you know this story, uh, and here you can see the result of this story uh, of how much each and all, every of these SSP have bought 
in price, in impressions, in share of impressions, because that's probably what you will look at to say, oh, RT the house below 1% buying, yes, but well, uh, well, there it is. Uh, somebody, somebody is buying uh, much, uh, much more. And there's, of course, always Google at the top. Uh, the story about Google is that um, this, these are the results of Google as it works in header bidding. Without header bidding, Google result would be also different. And this is, uh, this is one of the main reasons actually why header bidding is a trend because it allows for us to uh, in some way push Google to increase its prices or at least uh, help uh, publishers to monetize the impressions that Google doesn't want to buy for this high price with, for, with others, yes. The, the common effect is that, and it's not only about Google, uh, it's about every SSP, yes. For example, also Adform. If you just give it to Adform, it will be buying more than, of course, 7% of impressions, yes, but it will buy for far less price than, than what is here, yeah. And you can each try that and you will see. So the, the effect of a competition works on every SSP. And this is the result of that competition that these are the prices that they are they can be paying. Yeah. You can see, for example, that there are a lot of SSPs that are paying more than Google. Okay, this price is really, uh, I mean, this average CPM 1.3 is, is, is quite high. <laughs> so there are just a few SSPs that set up at Nexus that actually are able to uh, uh, to uh, to pay more than Google, others are here below. But if you would check some other domain or placement, uh, uh, you will actually more often see that the Google price is below uh, most of the SSPs, yes. So it immediately answers you that those as other SSPs are overbidding Google, yeah. But this is average. Again, this is the same story about average, yes. Yeah? So AppNexus bids one time 10 euros, one time one euro cent. Yeah, the average is five euros, but actually nobody paid five euros. But in average, you can see that also these perform in average extremely good compared to the Google. And that Google, and this is a very typical, uh, typical uh, uh, case. Now, actually, uh, here the Google power actually is maybe even more than a typical case, uh, but that it uh, buys very typically by 60% of impressions uh, here revenue share is actually big uh, often it is uh, that is there's about 40 percent of, of of revenue from uh, from google that can also differ according to season, uh, seasonalities uh, so you can try to check let's say um, okay last month that would be almost the same thing but let's try to select something like june and see how it was in june well on this account, we operate with very large GCPM, so it's a bit non-typical non situation for most of the publishers. But unfortunately, we cannot share the information from other clients, so there's not much other real customer, real data I can I can give it to you. So uh, I hope you're glad that you can see now here. Okay, here revenue share is even bigger, not less. So Google was actually stronger during the summer than it is now. And that's something that I was actually expecting because at the end of the year, uh, there's a lot more alternatives, let's say, uh, let's call them the, like that. So, so media catalog uh, stuff. Mm, okay. Check media catalogs maybe. It's uh, Lithuanian traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just didn't know that, uh, was it fine or not fine to share the results? But I guess this domain is fine. Let's wait a moment. I'm on the countryside and my internet could be a little bit slower than others. Okay, there it is. Okay, let's. Give it a moment to count things in a lot of a uh, lot of details. Uh, and uh, well, here you can see that the average. Uh, actually, no, this is not even much better. Uh, much better view. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you can see that it, it is very much very much different that 
there's some SSPs that actually have much lower than, than Google and some that are similar. Uh, there could also be different results per different placement. Yeah. Yes, so all of those, all of those, uh, all of those SSPs that we have connected should be appearing uh, down here. Uh, and uh, if they did buy anything on that previous period, uh, and they, of course, there is some maybe small threshold when we report or don't report uh, them here. Uh, and uh, to see more of them, if you are missing something, you see you don't have. Uh, particular one, uh, then, uh, that, then, then maybe you will remember you paste it on ads.txt. Again, go back and check uh, your ads.txt and make sure everything is there. And then you should also see basically after some time that the, uh, the list of the SSPs here also get uh, somewhat extended. Okay, so uh, that was my part about the revenue distribution. Um, uh, what I wanted to uh, leave you is, uh, and Paul as will still have his uh, 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 small talk about the future, but remember this is the fundamental of set ads, but this is not what we only do. We do uh, a lot, a lot about optimization, uh, a lot about how, uh, how uh, to optimize not only how we sell those between the other SSPs, but how we uh, optimize with viewability, how we optimize with viewable bid optimization, and many other things that even cannot be so, so much illustrated. Uh, for example, the cloud delivery, the other benefits that simply are there because they're more impressions, so they're simply better. I mean, at the end of the at the end of the day, we each just uh, just care that it's better getting the result. Yes, uh, that it's improving. And that's uh, how you mostly see the setup ad uh, result. But yeah, uh, of course, I think it's very interesting for you. And, and I will appreciate a lot about your feedback. And there could be something not working uh, occasionally. Uh, we intend to fix that quickly. Uh, uh, we cannot foresee all of the scenarios because really these numbers can be very much different for each account. Uh, so, uh, so drop us a note if you see something surprising or cannot explain. Uh, and also you can check here to write us feedback, uh, share the good things that you found uh, or some bugs that you found or recommendations where you would like us to take it further. Uh, something is missing, something needs to be alerted. Um, let us let us know, and we'll take that uh, that into account. Now I'm giving back it back to Paulus, and he'll be telling you shortly about uh, about the future before we end the session. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll start my sharing of the screen. Uh, I opened another account, guys, for you just to quickly uh, add. The uh what we did not, not we are not able to show um previously with another account this world recipe site and owner is allowing us to show his data therefore i could show it to you and uh, here is a very quick glance in the distribution per different ssps and you can see that in this particular case google is not necessarily paying the highest cpm so it's uh, consuming 60 percent creating 60% of revenue, consuming a bit less of impressions, but other platforms are also generating very substantial and uh, good revenue. Um, speaking about the future, as I previously told you, and as I uh, was trying to uh, basically give you our view on the near future, why and how and what we want uh, to build in this platform, uh, is to make it an analytical platform so that you could use on daily basis. It means that we really want to make it as a tool for you to really grow, like start viewing your growth of business for which you can benefit a lot. Uh, even this, for example, data that Tom's presented to you also suggests one important thing. If you have direct customers that are paying you really high CPM, it doesn't mean that there are no good programmatic bits even for 10, 20 or so euros so that we could also have a chance to win those impressions. There are techniques and there are solutions that Setupad can give to you to 
put all of your demand together into the auction, including your direct campaigns, so that you could uh, have the biggest chance to sell those impressions for the highest bidder. It's simple as that. Technicality maybe is a bit different, uh, difficult, sorry. Um, and, and we are able to implement it for you, just that the idea is uh, simple. Programmatic demand can really match the direct sales because some impressions are very much valuable and advertisers are willing to pay high prices for them. So this is our longer term future, but the next things that we're gonna deliver to you are related to uh, two major, or maybe even three major uh, plans in our roadmap is a mobile version, simplified mobile view so that you could, I don't know, some customers I for sure know they told me, we woke up in the morning, the first thing that we do, we check how much revenue we generated yesterday. So we will put that into your mobile screen so that it looks nice and simple and it's uh, usable better than this big desktop view, which is rather for analyzing the data, not a quick glance maybe. So mobile version will have that. Another major thing uh, that we plan on giving to you is to better illustrate how and uh, what uh, could be done to increase the revenue uh, generated from basically user behavior. Uh, what we're gonna build is, uh, I will give you some tips now. Uh, we are not still very much sure how we will name this new interface that we plan to build, but uh, it's either a success formula for the publisher or health formula for the publisher. Basically, it's a mathematical uh, representation of the key metrics that play together in building revenue. And you maybe already realize what those metrics could be. And I think it's quite self-explanatory in some cases, but let me just go to quickly to the domain view and I'll get those numbers for you to show. Um, in the meantime, the idea is pretty simple. Uh, now looking into the numbers, each of you individually maybe do not really understand either those numbers are good or bad. Okay, if we see CPM over one euro, we probably think that it's pretty okay. But if we see that, for example, user RPM metric uh, gives us a result of five euros or more, I'm not sure why it's not loading for so long. I can just have a quick refresh and see what happens. Hopefully it's gonna recover, it is. So. This two euro 30, is it good or bad? We are not sure, right? You, you might not be sure. We are in set of bad. Okay, we know we, because we can compare lots of accounts and we probably can understand, okay, this publisher is doing well because his CPM is that and or RPM is that. And this one maybe not so well. And when we probably would look for some cure, how to increase that RPM. Basically what I want to try, what, what I'm trying to tell you is that we are planning on building some kind of benchmarks and also uh, aggregated knowledge in one place that you could just quickly view what's the situation with your site right now, how much you need to increase some metrics at least just a little bit and what kind of result it would bring to you. Our analysis, our calculations show that even a slight increase in user engagement, even a slight increase in user uh, session duration vastly improves your revenue. And this is exactly what we tried to build with our, uh, for our customers, at least to, first of all, to show, to educate uh, them and, and of course you guys and uh, try to work together to increase those yields as much as it is possible. So this is it from my side, maybe a small tip uh, for the, Final part is that you can switch to the light version if you want. If you are rather on the darker side, you can switch to the dark mode as well. It's a small thing that you can uh, maybe sometimes benefit from if you prefer lighter or darker screen. So this is probably it from my side. Thank you very much for listening. Any questions now? Yeah, hello. Thank you, Paulus. Um... Uh, let's see if there are some uh, some questions. I somehow don't don't see to have them either. They're not or I'm in some other chat. Oh, do you see any questions there? Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Maybe everything is clear to everybody. Yeah. You. Yeah. 
you could raise your hand. If you Maybe you can yeah. unmute people and, and see if somebody has to say anything. Yeah, if not, we are done. Yes, I will unmute all. Then we can say either goodbye <laughs> or somebody can ask a question. So I think now all are unmuted unless those. Oh. I'll ask all to unmute. It's it's okay. actually oh. a good internal question. Thomas, are you going to answer this one? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear the question. Uh, will there be real-time data available in the future? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Pavlos, please, uh, please stop sharing the screen. It will take. Uh... Ah, okay, okay. I didn't I, notice. I will share. Uh, I will mm -hmm. share the. All right. The common background. Uh, right. So yeah, uh, real-time data. Uh, it's uh, it's a very good question uh, because I always have a counter question to this. Uh, it's what exactly is meant in real time. Uh, uh, the concept of real time is that you uh, count something in real time, uh, but it can be up to three. Uh, for example, you count. Uh, I don't know how many planes cross your head yeah, every every second, but you can also count it uh, with an update, for example, for uh, up to previous hour or up to previous day. Yes. So, uh, but it just that it means that it updates all the time in real time. It doesn't always mean that it is about today. Uh, and I think today is is this data that our customer uh, customers are looking forward mostly. Uh, so it's not about maybe so much about data updates that every second we count more impressions because you understand there's billions of impressions all the time and uh, and we could uh, decide to update it in a second or, or once an hour or once in five hours or something. But it's essentially about today's data that, uh, that uh, our customers have been mostly interested and we plan to have it uh, for, uh, I cannot promise you for the next release, uh, but for sure it's one of our soonest developments. I'm not sure where was this question coming from actually. I did not hear it. From Dana. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, that's, uh, that's also very good. Okay, so um, um, if there are no other questions, I try there to ask you guys. There is, there is one. one, but um, well, we tried to answer this one, how to increase mm -hmm. the CPM. There are numerous mm -hmm. ways, and I don't know, maybe I can tell a few quick tips. Yeah, right? yeah. So go ahead. Uh, as I told in the very beginning, advertisers are paying for the ads online and they are paying for the results. So our aim is actually to increase the performance of ad means drive to make them drive results for advertisers as the first thing ads should be visible the viewability is very important so, so we should keep on growing and, and increasing the viewability viewability on i'm sorry as much as it is possible and also the ctr the click rate the other things what can be done of course drive quality traffic make users stay longer on your site and uh, not uh, clutter your website with too many ads that's a, another mm -hmm. final final thing to, to tell. That's generally it. These are pretty simple things to do. Yes, the, the, the idea is that we cannot somehow magically uh, push advertisers to pay more, yes. Uh, we can either take their ads or refuse to take their ads, yes. And okay, historically we can increase the prices and, and make more competition and then they pay more. That's that's always uh, right. And that's what we do with the help of the head, header bidding as it is, yes. But uh, as surprising as it can be, uh, every time we launch a new website, it's 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 news for us. So we, we don't know exactly how much it will be. We have some guess. Sometimes we're precise with our guesses, but it can also be a big surprise. Uh, uh, usually a big surprise means a, a positive surprise, yes. Uh, uh, so, because uh, everything is a lot about the um, uh, audience as well. So you can have your website uh, with good viewability and, uh, and ICTRs and try to not overcrowd and try to have 
um, sticky formats inside of the screen and uh, this and that. Uh, but of course, the audience itself, yes. Uh, what is the content? What uh, this audience is, what kind of audience it is attracting to and where it is coming from, yeah? So audience, for example, from the States are, let's say, I mean, in average are, let's say, 10 times, audience, a user from the States is 10 times more valuable than a user from India. And that's how, how it is uh, uh, econ economically. So. Uh, you have to know also about your traffic acquisition uh, uh, that uh, something that you, that provides you cheaper way to get users might also not uh, return exactly what you expected yes as your previous users so they have to be alike yeah uh, so uh, that those are the things and those are some of those additional things like geo uh, geo locations and uh, the the channels where the users are coming from uh, we will be able to give you uh, this uh, this information to be connected with how much uh, how much they're generating. Yes, of course, it will probably require some setup from you that uh, the URLs are uh, particular, uh, but we will be able to to answer you uh, these questions about users soon. Yes, uh, I mean uh, about how much uh, they are worth in particular sections or from different channels and and, and geo locations as well. Uh, but basically, users and their engagement is the only way how to how to increase the, the CPM. Uh, even you can think, um, let's say, okay, should I take some ad away or take or uh, and that would increase my average uh, eCPM uh, probably. But that can also decrease the revenues. And on the other side, of course, you cannot too overcrowd your website because let's say you have put the 25th banner on the website it won't give you more revenues yes it will be about the same or even less yes so you have to be uh i mean there's a limit and for each website it's a bit different because based on the length and based on the time spent and uh, on all the other parameters but actually also watching setup ad results uh revenue per page view will exactly tell you if you do another placement if that increases and so it made some positive impact effect it decreases it was actually negative or stayed the same that means you rather take away that extra banner that you decided to put but this way you can also uh, experiment that would rather mean uh, increase in revenue not a particular question that was asked uh, how to make cpms higher yes uh, the other thing is also the the viewable bid refresh that automatically makes it higher yes because of uh, we have a chance to display another another banner so as long as you can keep the audience uh, as much as the audience and good audience you can get uh, that is the, the most effective way how to think about increasing uh, increasing the price if you have a particular advertisers if you do direct sales because many don't do direct sales and because it's hard and it costs a lot of money but if you do do that there's also a, a way how to integrate with setup ad so that all of those prices are compared and that you can benefit from direct buyer who sometimes occasionally occasionally buys it, let's say from 10 year of CPM, but a very few amount of, let's say, uh, impressions. Yes, we can connect that and make sure that in programmatic, there is no other buyer willing to pay higher than this buyer. Yes, and in this way, increase the price. Yes, try to basically find new buyers, not from the programmatic world, but uh, from the direct world. But that usually takes a bit of, uh, let's say, investment and time to get such operations uh, starting. And that is used by, by usually the top medias, uh, not by everyone, because it's, it's, it's a big risk actually, and it's quite uh, hard, uh, but uh, yeah, with a good dedication, that's also a way how to increase uh, the CPM, just simply start selling it more, uh, not just only programmatically. Okay, uh, I guess that is it. Um, uh, no, is Tom, Tom's actually, no? do, do you we see the more. chat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I see. Sorry, For example, I uh, what is a good viewability score? I can quickly answer this one, it's easy. Yes, please, please, uh, like that, usually a good viewability score is considered, which is over 50%, but the aim, the, the, the viewability, uh, uh, let's say metric that we need to try to aim is at least 70%. And uh, average market viewability, as we know from Google, uh, is around 60% in, in our uh, region, something like that. 
it could be a bit higher, it could be a bit lower the market on how mature it is. Sixty percent more. So you now been for. Sorry, Paulus, I, I got a bit poor connection. I hope you're answering the questions. I lost the connection as well, Toms. Yeah, okay, so uh, so connection. we're back. Uh, I think we can uh, we we have time uh, till half past four, and we can answer the remaining questions. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, well, for some of them, we we cannot say too much. Yes, uh, these things that we now discussed is really something that we are working for on for. Uh, today's data, uh, real-time data, uh, as I explained, the sources uh, very much connected to from where the money uh, uh, is generated most and how to make that even more, uh, make decisions about how to allocate your investments and marketing budgets yes, to attract more audience. So uh, uh, the viewability, uh, Paul has explained, uh, any plans about the, the video ads? Video ads essentially is something, uh, to be honest, quite different from what we are uh, often working with because video involves player. Uh, that's something that, uh, uh, that uh, yes, is not so, but they uh, openly used across different channels. And uh, if we talk about uh, in-stream video, uh, not outstream video. Uh, out, outstream video is something that we have some solutions uh, that uh, you can use uh, uh, or at least test. Uh, we do have, and uh, and I, I know some of those questions who is asking. Uh, 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 they are they're waiting for that, and we can. But in-stream video is uh, uh, a big uh, technical, uh, let's say, boundary. Uh, because the player itself has to run the header bidding. Uh, I mean, we, we can tell everything how it should be done, but it requires customization in that, in that player. And that uh, always, as we try to do something, is usually where it all stops. Yes, uh, that you, the player has to initiate the, the, the header bidding start. There is, there is, a, there is a solution. Uh, we haven't run much far ahead, uh, but also that in integration and that all things connected with player, uh, you have to understand that there has to be some significant amount of the content so that we later actually make some money, yeah? If there is no point, there's not a lot of inventory, then, uh, then you know, um, you, you, you might as well just, just put up Google uh, video ads uh, and, and that would be uh, good, yeah? Because setup ad can bring you uh, let's say can double maybe even Google's money, yes, or 30% more than Google's money. But if it's just about 100 euros and making 130 euros is just not economically uh, beneficial for us. If we have to invest, for example, a lot of time to set it up, you have to invest time in IT and we have to do the following, yes. So that usually becomes, becomes the boundary, despite the fact that we do have possibilities to monetize both in-stream and out-stream. It's just the scale of this. Uh, and uh, and yeah and uh, then the IT resources so to say uh, but of course obviously we are far more advanced with our display monetization and um, um, uh, maybe Paul as you could answer uh, there's a question if my ECPM drops 30% how can I use the new interface okay. to know why this happened I think this is a good one yeah yeah that one actually I, I also wanted to answer to Dimitro um, it's probably not so straightforward answer because you need to check several things but really the interface can help you and sometimes we saw situations when uh, we could actually pretty quickly and easily answer the customer what's the what's the real reason why the cpm dropped uh, for particular placement for example let's imagine it happened for particular placement not the whole 
whole account. Yes, this, this the whole is account my, is this, a different story, but it could be yeah. also influenced by an ad unit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Sorry, this is what I what? wanted to highlight, uh, Paul. That I think uh, we have to remember that you you have to go into placement statistics because if the yep, on exactly. all all account, for example, you wake up in this morning, you see that oh. My total ECPM or total revenue yesterday dropped thirty percent. Uh, it may really happen not on the total level, but most often it happened on some particular placement. So before mm -hmm. uh, exactly. panicking, I would say before panicking or before trying to dig into every metric, just go through your placements and check that everything was actually up and running all the time. Yeah, because if something is stopped or again something was started, uh, it can mm -hmm. uh, substantially change the total account metric, uh, the result. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We had cases when publisher asks this exact question, not maybe 30% drop, but something like that. And uh, okay, we ourselves, we check the placements and we see, so the main, the best uh, performing placement is gone. Why? We see, okay, there is a direct campaign running now instead of uh, full monetization of set bad. So that's a clear answer to such a question for in such particular case that maybe you simply forgot that your ad ops uh, changed uh, now the monetization to direct sale or something else. Or maybe it's gone completely for some uh, reason, technical and something like that. Such things happen. But if everything's fine with all the placements and, uh, and uh, if the CPM keeps dropping, it could be like market reasons. For, for example, now we have COVID, some industries stopped advertising, like for example, as you know, uh, travel industry completely stop, uh, stopped uh, or more or less stopped uh, some ads probably still coming, um, entertainment and etc. But if there is a sudden drop, once again, we probably need to check if the viewability did not or changed, maybe it changed if it decreased for, for sure it influenced the CPM. Maybe the fill rate dropped, so you need to check. Maybe some SSP or Google or something else stopped buying for some particular reason. Maybe some technicality or something like that. Also, you probably should check the CTR as well. Maybe the CTR for some reason also uh, dropped significantly. It could happen uh, sometimes when an ad which is not supposed to be running in a mobile uh, website for some reason on a website started running on the, on the mobile sites and they're uh, deep below the content uh, and it's not being seen by users it's just re generating requests in, in in let's say in vain and it's not generating any results then it for sure will show you all the key metrics uh, uh, being smaller so to say the viewability the CTR would drop and the fill rate will drop as well so that's probably an answer to your question. Yeah, so let me add, Paula. So first mm -hmm. is uh, simply you check if things are uh, running in the right places at the right scale as it did before, yeah? Because naturally uh, that, uh, that can be one of the, one of the reasons. And uh, if you see that, okay, those things are fine, uh, you analyze the CTR and the viewability, uh, and then it means that some audience behavior uh, changed. Uh, also, you can look into the buyers uh, on particular SSPs and if there something changed, and that could also be explanation. There is also a third option, uh, which is related sometimes uh, if the publisher somehow restricts simply set apart from getting some inventory. Yeah. So, for example, if it starts to try uh, something else or is selling some, uh, have some even self-promotional campaign on some part of the inventory, you happen to target uh, users that are more valuable uh, uh, first page or, or some particular section and uh, and then it drops, yes. So some activities that are actually related to not set up ad, but it limits the set up ad's ability to have the same inventory, yeah. So again, the, we, we, get, we get either less impressions or less valuable impressions uh, as such. So it's not about how efficiently we sell, sell it, but simply we don't get it. And there are certain cases when it's like this, I don't want to explain because it's uh, it's very, very individual. Uh, but we have had cases when, let's say, customer either accidentally or somewhere relaunches its own Google, uh, yeah, and actually they set up at ECP and therefore drops. It's very, very probable, yes. If you open another sales channel that is selling cheaper 
then of course all our optimization will pretty much go to uh, go to rubbish and and uh, uh, okay it will work but uh, but there was going to be someone else selling it cheaper and you know that algorithms will go on by by there yes and uh, that's why we never recommend to have uh, a lot of monetization platforms that you cannot uh, control uh, you should be encouraged to do tests and to compare results but uh, to keep your uh, let's say channels so that you can you know where and what in inventory they get, uh, what are their results, and that really there is some specific reason to, to, to do this, yeah? Otherwise, having everything under one unified header bidding, both direct and programmatic sales, uh, is, is the best way, yes. Uh, it's just uh, a decision. Who is managing this and what, and what are those other channels? Uh, you can plug in and plug out some things, but uh, it kind of has to be under one roof, yes? And uh, sometimes our result really drops if some other sudden player is, is become, uh, coming there in and is not under that roof and is not somehow optimized and is simply taking, uh, taking an efficiency away. Very good question. Uh, thank you. Uh, we also have a question here about Adblock. Uh, uh, we have plans. Uh, we have uh, had <laughs> plans a long time. Uh, sometimes when there is a solution, it works for three, two months and then it doesn't. Uh, uh, it's like a cat and a mouse game, I believe, a, a little bit. Again, we have uh, another solution. Uh, it is, uh, uh, I have to admit again, not easy to implement. It, it is not as easy as display advertising to put a tag on the website. Uh, we have to change a uh, few things. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would monetize the adblock traffic with some uh, some effect. Uh, I would say we're still analyzing it unless all of us can tell me uh, something more, uh, it is possible mm -hmm. to monetize part of the ad block traffic, not over. I mean, so basically you cannot overcome it as, as, uh, as the question is, uh, are there any plans mm -hmm. to overcome that? We can only kind of cooperate with them because there's this better ad standard that, that can be still sold and this can generate some part of the, mm -hmm. uh, basically you can, uh, regain some part of the impressions that were lost to this. Uh, maybe I should say that uh, adblock traffic is not so much relevant or adblock traffic monetization is not so much relevant for websites that have majority of the traffic from mobile sites, uh, mobile mobile users in, the, in their mobile site. So uh, basically we are probably talking about uh, websites that have still significant amount of desktop traffic. That's one thing and uh, that uh, are willing to have this rather difficult, as Tom said, or not so difficult, but complicated and uh, time-consuming uh, technical implementation. Uh, I, don't, I did not really understand, Tom's your part, where you asked if it's possible to monetize just part of the ad block traffic. What do you mean? Is no, it I mean, like uh, not the whole? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's like this, that there are several ad blocking uh, tools. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. and systems and our modernization works only through uh, mm -hmm. this uh, be, uh, better ad standard or well, what was the mm -hmm. name for that yeah acceptable ads uh, acceptable, acceptable ads yes 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 um so several... some users can still select to not show uh, still not get any ads and some plug uh, some of those ad blocks do not uh, support it at all so it's kind of part of the inventory and of course the result would be less uh, 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 than you would probably expect it yeah. uh, to be from this part, yes. Very so, true. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yeah, that's that, how it is. The, the most we try, we cannot really get back uh, full, full of that. And mm -hmm. so it's part, and it's a question about the scale, yes. If you are a small website, uh, don't waste time on this, really. Uh, we rather, uh, and, we, and there are simple ways how to, how to do it. You can show pop-ups and ask users to unblock it. You can try to give them treats and basically uh, avoiding them to use adblock is the best strategy, yes, because uh, paying, char paying small commission to the devil and still getting something back, it will always not be a very sustainable strategy, yes. I'm being very honest with you. I mean, not really a devil, but basically some other kind of uh, way that uh, that allows something, but not not fully, yes. Uh, if you un avoid the ad block the user is is yours and you 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 it's your rules yes 
Uh, so if you are a small website, uh, you, you know it. You're talking about maybe less than 10% of the of the revenues. Yes, if you are not specifically, for example, IT website that has that could have uh, uh, more. For example, 40% of your users could be ad block. Yes, but uh, other websites have less than 20%. So uh, maybe 10% um, of the money is that you. For, for example, currently see in the set of other revenues, it's something that we are talking about, yeah? And then uh, we just have to analyze, is it cost-worthy cost to do it uh, and uh, or not, yeah? So if there's a lot of traffic, for sure it is. Uh, if, if, it's, if, if there isn't, then you see, okay, 10% from this is, I'd rather invest my time and, and I can get 10% of users more easier, then better do that, yes, because, uh, this un unblocking will probably never happen and we can just uh, by paying some uh, commission basically circumvent uh, and go according of course not like circumvent but according to the standards to dis still display some ads yes but they're again limited uh, number limited content limited uh, and they're much much less buyers than it would be normally so the better strategy is just just try to <laughs> avoid those ad block users encourage them to to unblock it and, and not give access to the website, be as much critical or be very kind of giving them treats or some kind of uh, uh, yeah presence for unblocking it. Uh, uh, then that's that uh, is a better strategy. M might be actually even way more easier. So um, that's what I meant, Paulus. Um, and I hope now. Oh, we have another one. Mm -hmm. So how to re reduce the impact of advertising on metrics, uh, largest uh, uh, content With uh, core web vitals. Uh, yeah. I understand what you are trying to ask here, uh, but it's not an easy answer yet uh, because we are still not very much sure what kind of impact there is uh, with those metrics being, for example, bad. Uh, but you're probably asking because it's a new thing from Google and uh, the next year, I think we are planning to uh, use signals of uh, Core Web Vitals for sale. So there is an indirect actual effect. If you have low uh, LCP, low CLS and other metrics in, in your web performance, you will probably get, first of all, less traffic from Google search. Then the other thing is that, of course, it impacts user behavior, user spend time, time spent on site, the bounce rate if your website is uh, loading, loading slowly, and, and if it's not, uh, if it doesn't provide good user experience. This is actually part of this health formula that I was uh, talking to you about that we plan to implement. And those metrics, it's a very good question, si I question, I should say, because we do plan to put them also in our interface just to show you what the LCP, CLS, and the, the other metrics are uh, that are very much related to Core Web Vitals. There are more than three, actually. Just the three of them are more important. I think one of them is FID or something like that. So not sure if I could answer to this question. It's rather technical, just that uh, there are, of course, many different ways how to improve, uh, first of all, your uh, ad placements uh, probably should be uh, stricter in size. Uh, if 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 a placement is jumping up and down when an ad is loading, then you will have worse metrics. That's one thing. If your website is too slow, if it uses lots of resources, too many ads, too many requests, it again will influence uh, some core web vitals results. So our aim is also to really limit how, how many requests our ads generate. So we, not, we do not necessarily want to run so many uh, demand partners as, as we have in total, we have over 20, but uh, we rather run only those demand partners that generate significant uplift, uh, not just 0, 0.0 some percentage uh, of revenues generated. And this way, not directly, but rather indirectly, we would also have a positive impact in core web vitals. But this is rather for the next year uh, that we will focus on those. Uh, for now, we tried just to build a very nice and uh, good and simple uh, user interface, also mobile site, as I said, mobile version of it. And that's probably more or less it, what I wanted to share regarding this question. 
Okay. I hope I, I hope it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, good that you uh, you knew how to answer this one. Um, yeah, of course, everything also would impact us, uh, the loading and such, uh, not only the loading speed of the website and the content, but uh, yeah, the ways of how it's loaded and so forth. And uh, yeah, we can also uh, give some recommendations regarding the websites uh, 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 if you think uh, you would need that uh, about ways to improve it. Sometimes we wouldn't, I mean, we would see the website is all up and running and the loading speed is good. Sometimes you would see that it's not the case and there could be some suggestions on what to do. And those few suggestions we can give them, uh, they're not so complicated uh, to, to give, uh, uh, but they can have a huge uh, yeah, positive impact on, on, the, on the ads. And because of course the loading speed also, not oh. only co content, but of the ads is, is crucial. Maybe a small remark regarding uh, these metrics uh, also. Uh, we as a company work closely with Google, as you probably know. Uh, we have uh, direct uh, contacts and representatives with whom we try to solve various issues and, and, and some things to improve. We, we, we do a lot. We do a lot of work with Google together. And uh, we know that uh, Google also measures their uh, partners, such as Setupad, uh, by using some kind of health formula as well. And uh, one of the metrics that we take into consideration is of uh, if, is the CLS, LCP, and basically the web core vitals uh, of a whole network. So this means we as a company, as set to path, we will for sure try to make those results better for you. We will look for best solutions and we will, especially as we have direct contacts with Google, we will get probably updated uh, with the most recent solutions. So for sure you will get uh maybe not really directly but through us some best practices how to deal with that so just a small collaboration on this yep okay thank you i think we uh, finally run out of time uh, yeah <laughs> uh, we try to focus this on client ui of course it's good that we had uh, other questions i i think we will repeat such webinars maybe once a month maybe less uh, we'll definitely let you know Thank you for joining us. I uh, really appreciate really good questions. I hope it was interesting for you. Encourage to go go to Client UI and see for yourself what kind of uh, uh, conclusions you can make out of it and how it can help you to grow the business. So uh, enjoy the evening and uh, see you soon again, I guess, I hope. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Goodbye.